guys, you are listening to In The Books, a period drama podcast hosted by the following two dorks. I'm dork number one. I'm Michelle. I live in the States. You can find me at Musings on Instagram and Twitter. Although Twitter's getting a little weird, but I'll stick it out <laughs> for now. Until we come up with a better alternative, yeah, that would be. Putting them on notice. <laughs> I'm Dork number two. I'm Rita. I live in England and I'm at Annoying Rita on Instagram and Twitter for now. And welcome to our second episode of podcasts on The Empress or Die Kaiserin. I know I probably butchered that, but you know. No, I think it was right. Really? Yeah. <gasps> Yay. Um, you know, if you're feeling a bit German, go for it. This episode is called The Arrival. Which is, reminds me of that shitty space movie with the, uh, what's it, Matt Damon? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, yeah. Well, and shitty, pardon the pun, but, you know, <laughs> that's what he had to use for fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets, oh, wow. That tangent went uh, far and deep. Um, anyway. 30 seconds into the podcast, we're yes. already talking about something else. <laughs> Oh, dear God. Okay. Uh, well, strap on in uh, for a very lengthy recap. Let's see. This episode began with a sobbing Archduchess Sophie being comforted by a ghost toddler. Less than 30 seconds in, and we're dealing with ghost babies. Can you believe that? Who are you going to call? Ghost babies! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the ghost that will haunt Sophie throughout the rest of this episode is Maria Anna, not Anna Maria, but Maria Anna, Sophie's fourth child, who died in an epileptic fit at just four years old. Mm. Crying Sophie is comforted by the senior lady-in-waiting with an uplifting him. Question <clears throat> mark. Yeah. And she forces Sophie to pull herself together ahead of Elizabeth's arrival at court. After the title sequence, we see Franz Joseph smiling down as he twirls the lock of Puck's hair that Elizabeth gave him last week. This happy mood screeches to a halt when the polar-bearing wearing chick walks in and makes an absolute ass of herself trying to rekindle an affair, but Franz insists that it's over. Oh, yeah, he, he kicked her to the curb. Uh, 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 the aforementioned senior lady-in-waiting, who we will henceforth be referring to as matron, it's just easier. lines up a group of new ladies-in-waiting. They are to serve Elizabeth. We start off with 11 women who are to be whittled down to a small, select group of girls who she feels are up to the task. And, you know, maybe up to wearing a wig like the one she was sporting. <laughs> Good God, that was a monstrosity. Let's see, straight out of the bat, one of them is rejected for daring to have a bosom. Yeah, we're down, <laughs> ten. We're down to ten. Damn, we're yeah. not going to last two days at this rate. Mm -mm. Um, across the palace, little Ludwig Victor tells his brother Max that Franz wrote Elizabeth 44 times in the intervening months. <laughs> I can't even get a text back. This is just depressing. <laughs> oh, God. He seems impressed, but Max is an embittered old cynic who doesn't think it will last. It's going to have to. They're going to be married, Max. Yeah. Uh, there's also a pet monkey in the room because Max's whole vibe is just skeezy. <laughs> Elizabeth and family pull up to the palace in Vienna in their carriage. Her father waits until the last possible moment to offer her some sage advice. Here at court, do not speak your mind all the time. Does she listen? Of course not. As they go to exit their carriage, Franz hurtles past the footman and opens the door for her himself. Uh, my biography reliably informs me that the, he did this in real life, which is adorable! Oh my god, Just that's so cute. 
<laughs> so happy to see her. Excited to see him, she reaches out for a kiss, but stops when she hears the shocked gasps <laughs> of the courtiers surrounding them. <laughs> I swear, I swear, it was like the quantity of air in that general vicinity you could you could feel it just disappearing <laughs> through the screen she is quickly ushered into the palace and away <laughs> from the eyes of the public uh franz then helps helena and ludovica out of their carriage and we get to see helena's new haircut for the first time let's just say choices were made <laughs> yep uh, Elizabeth looks excited to enter her new home and stares up in wonder at the ornate ceilings. Her mood is short-lived. She tries and fails to get a response from Helene, who turns her back on her and struts away. Still not on speaking terms, huh? Yeah. Elizabeth is ushered into her new apartments, where she meets Countess Esterhazy, a.k.a. the Matron, the Matron with the wig, oh. and her new ladies-in-waiting, chosen from the best families in the realm. Well, most of them. Elizabeth makes another fatal error and tries to shake their hands. No, 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 no touching. No. And please, no, no, no. no first names. She's then taken into her dressing room, where she is shown some incredibly elaborate dresses they've made for her, and uh, then... Dozens upon dozens of shoes. She learns that it is customary in the Austrian court for the Empress to never wear a pair of shoes twice. Oh my god. <laughs> Bonkers, people. Who's looking at her feet? Honest That's to god. Just... I'm, especially Ugh. underneath those giant skirts. Well, Elizabeth's attention is drawn towards a ridiculously shiny diamond necklace. Sophie notices and tells her that it's been in our family for hundreds of years. She p carefully places it around Elizabeth's neck in a move that feels quite motherly. As Elizabeth smiles at her, Sophie begins to zone out. She has flashbacks to chasing her giggling daughter around the palace and is only able to pull out of them when she is asked to attend a cabinet meeting in the conference room on an matter of urgent business we then cut to the conference room where a group of men we can suppose are the cabinet <laughs> are all huddled around a map shit has hit the fan uh -huh. you might recall russia previously entreating france to enter into a war against the ottoman empire well now france and england have entered the war aligned with the ottomans against russia Franz's cabinet are fighting amongst themselves about which side they should be on. Max argues that the Russians are outnumbered and that they should back the Western Alliance, who will obviously win. But Archduchess Sophie thinks they need their alliance with Russia against the rising power of the West. There is a third option, of course, put forward by Baron Alexander von Back, and that's neutrality. The Empire's funds would be under a considerable strain if they were to enter a war. Franz Joseph announces that they will not fight, which pisses absolutely everyone uh -huh. in the room off. <laughs> he has considerable plans for the Empire that do not include killing off a huge chunk of his subjects. After the meeting includes, Franz talks to Mac and they make secret plans to meet someone that night. Back to Elizabeth. She's trying to take a bath but has to hear nonsense from Matron about how she'll have to bathe twice a day for two hours a day each. Like, that's four hours in a bath. Ugh. And not even in water, Ugh. but in a mixture containing donkey's milk and chase tree, whatever that is. What? The ladies in waiting <laughs> all giggle and fuss over her as they scrub her, and it's annoying as hell. I mean, the lack of body autonomy... <sighs> is just too much, and she sinks under the water. <laughs> Poor girl. <laughs> I bet she's wondering where the exits are. Get it. Um, we then cut to her trying on all the new dresses they bought her. She gets stuffed into corset after corset, all of them bound too tightly so she can't breathe. She begs for some air and is allowed out of, into the palace gardens. 
She is, of course, followed by a gaggle of ladies in waiting who gossip and spy on her. She finds some kind of exotic bird in the garden and goes to take a closer look. <laughs> Classic Disney princess movie, people! Mm -hmm. uh, she is interrupted by Skeezy Max. He tries to warn her about the dark underbelly of court life, otherwise known as him, or, <laughs> or whatever, and offers her some more unsolicited advice. Stay close to me, and you'll be all right. <laughs> Elizabeth smirks at him and tells him she has a suspicion that the opposite is true. Yeah, she ain't no damn fool. She knows. Meanwhile, back in the, inside the palace, uh, Sophie and Matron are rummaging through Elizabeth's trunks, and they have found her mediocre poetry. <laughs> <laughs> matron declares yes matron <laughs> declares that I'm, she yeah, it was just like oh my god you people the invasion of privacy was hilarious oh, <laughs> god it's like nothing is well as we'll see nothing is safe um uh matron declares that elizabeth is going to be quote a lot of work end quote <laughs> sophie warns her not to scare elizabeth off there is a knock on the door and Carl, Sophie's husband, enters. She looks surprised to see him as if it's not the day before his son's wedding. They make polite small talk and it's clear they are nothing more than acquaintances, which makes his request for alone time together that night feel wow, more wow, bizarre wow. than ever. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie brushes him off with a, uh huh. <laughs> and thankfully the scene concludes because that was painful <sighs> uncomfortable yeah over in the ballroom elizabeth arrives for her dance lesson which for some reason has no dance instructor but your hound strauss <laughs> is there <laughs> what <I'm damn. sighs> He plays a waltz he wrote for them and Elizabeth and Franz whirl around the room, giggling as they spin faster and faster. <laughs> it's so cute! <sighs> Realising that this might be their only time before tomorrow's <laughs> wedding where they can make out, Elizabeth drags Franz into an empty room next door and they begin making out. Uh, as they should, quite frankly. Yeah. Lack of Franz and Elizabeth <laughs> this episode. Um, but they're rudely interrupted by Matron, who looks kind of horrified at the thought of anyone kissing, just like, oh! Uh, she demands the Imperial Bride begins preparing herself. <laughs> In the palace garden, Le Leonatin, I'm gonna pronounce her name Leonatin. <laughs> Leontin. Leontin. Leon. There's an N in the middle though. Leontin. Okay, Leontine. that's how, when I said it like that. Yeah. Just say it in a German accent. Leontin. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> in the palace gardens, Leontin. One of Elizabeth's new ladies in waiting has a sneaky meeting with her co revolutionary. This random street urchin looking woman has managed to pass herself off as a countess. Don't ask questions as to how this happened. <laughs> um, only problem is, she doesn't have the fancy shoes she needs to complete her disguise. <laughs> She begs her conspirator for some damn shoes. She's been walking around <laughs> just a stocking feet. It's a hey. Damn! As we said earlier, nobody's be looking at your feet in this place. The dresses are so big. Um, <laughs> this guy tells her it's imperative she gets close to Elizabeth and gains her trust for the plan to work. I think she knows what the plan is at this yeah. point. Anyway. Leniton smiles and says she will, with the sinister vibe of a Bond villain. <laughs> As she's walking to her apartment, Elizabeth spots something one of the maids drops and goes to pick it up. It's a little doll made of straw. Fascinated, she grabs it and hides it in the fold of her dress. You know, you know a doll made out of straw is never going to bode well. I was like... Are they putting hexes on it's her? Like, because, yeah, anyway. it's like voodoo has reached Germany, has reached Austria. 
but I don't think that no, that's voodoo. No. Um, oh, uh, <laughs> anyway, when Elizabeth enters her chamber, she finds a doctor oh. and an archbishop waiting for her. She's told that they need to confirm the imperial bride's purity, and then I sighed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're gonna everyone. They need to inspect her hymen. I, I'm surprised they even know what a hymen is, because, oh my god. Oh. Anyway, the creepy archbishop insists that no chastity, no marriage, <sighs> a sentence he actually says. Yeah. Uh, she's forced to lie down, and the doctor inspects her with some kind of glass <sighs> cylinder thing that literally made me scream. Yeah. Uh, that could go so very, very wrong, my friend. Do not do that. It was just horrible. Shh. She submits to the examination and winces in pain, reaching out and grabbing Leontin, Leontin's <laughs> hand, Leontin's hand, who comforts her. Uh, the doctor declares her untouched, and we thankfully have finished a very traumatic scene. Let's never think of it again. I'm sure we'll have to, but... We then cut to Franz and Max in the Emperor's study. Also in the room is First Lieutenant Krall, who gave his arm to the Empire during the Revolution. Franz begins explaining that one of Lieutenant Kral's daughters, Agnes, was impregnated by a young man who had no intention of marrying her. She died in childbirth. His second daughter, Emily, fell prey to the same young man. <sighs> Overcome with despair, she fell from her roof and is now in a sanatorium. Over the course of the speech, it becomes obvious that the young man in question was Max, and he looked shaken. Franz agrees to pay off Kral with a title and a pension to ensure the family are taken care of. Max tries to defend himself, but Franz tells him he has to follow the rules or he will ruin them all. Keep it in your pants, Max! <laughs> Honestly, what is it with this family and sisters? Honestly, zip it! <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I have no patience for Max these days. Um, no. Uh, let's see. Time for an awkward drinks reception at the palace. And Elizabeth walks in looking fabulous and immediately befriends Franz's father, Carl, who jokes with Elizabeth's own father about being trapped in the countryside by their wives. Fun times. I really love this. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> mates. <laughs> Sophie then calls Elizabeth over to meet, quote-unquote, the archbishop, who was responsible for her sexual assault that afternoon. Elizabeth looks tense when he calls it a sacred ritual <sighs> and snarks that rather than being sacred, it felt like two men looking under her frock. Go, queen! Go, queen! <laughs> Elizabeth's mother is all the way across the room and she can sense <laughs> oh the shit hitting the fan and wax a tray of drinks out of a footman's hands to kill the tension. It's fucking hilarious. Oh my god. Oh my god. I fucking love her. Oh I fucking love her. <laughs> uh, Sophie then declares that Elizabeth must be exhausted and orders her to bed like a naughty child. Instead of supporting Elizabeth against this obvious ploy, to remove her from the party, Franz, probably eyeing an opportunity to leave too, insists she go rest. Back in her room, Elizabeth gets undressed and one of her more annoying ladies-in-waiting gives her a whole spiel about how she's here to serve her and whatever she needs, she'll give her. <sighs> she's like, okay, sure, can you tell me what the straw doll thingy is? But apparently she cannot. You know who can? revolutionary in disguise Leontin who I, ho I hope that's her name I really do <laughs> who tells her where she comes from question marks about where that is they set fire to those straw dummies as a symbol of mortality so that the lord will protect them they then share some moments of intimacy when she brushes Elizabeth's teeth that was very lesbianic yeah Elizabeth hears her ladies-in-waiting squealing and goes to check what's up. They have received an invitation to a party held by Max, so, you know, naturally, they all are dying to go. And to be fair, 
when they arrive, the party is lit. I mean, there's men in drag, <laughs> there's women in like no clothes at all. <laughs> Everyone is going wild, and the absinthe is a flowing. Yep. That makes you hallucinate. So well, I, w- I wouldn't. I'd, I'd leave. I'd leave it. Theoretically, I'd, I'd, no. Um, no, the stuff they used to make back in the day. Oh. Back then. Okay. Back then. Yeah. Okay. Um, at the center of the party is actual Litz. <laughs> List? How do you... I've forgotten how to say his name. Lit. List. 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 Oh, yeah. I, you have to, like, really pretend you're Austrian. List. <laughs> um, <laughs> actual <laughs> List playing the piano and the ladies in waiting are all a flutter freaking out like he's a beetle <laughs> and to be fair he does look freaking amazing yeah. uh he's too serenades the future empress with a song <laughs> she's just <sighs> racking them up at the moment seriously um so while his future wife party's on down franz is out in the dark meeting a british man called mr stevenson who they beg to build a railway as I mentioned last week, Austria is huge, and Franz wants to connect his people and build prosperity for them. Stevenson tells him it will cost him. The whole world wants a railway after all, so Franz offers to get him his money within the next three days before he departs Austria. Hmm. I predict a clusterfuck. Absolutely. Back at the party, Elizabeth is drunk as fuck, and so, of course, Max makes his move. He begins to finger the necklace Elizabeth is wearing. Oh. It's the same one, so... I regret that choice of words. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, <laughs> you wrote it, baby. <laughs> uh, it, it's the same one Sophie put around her uh, neck um, that morning. He tells her that it previously belonged to Marie Antoinette, and she was wearing it when the guillotine cut off her head. Okay. That's charming. Uh, He makes it clear that he hates his family and wants to leave, and then makes a play for her by saying that a life with him would suit her better. It's not too late for her to call off her wedding. When she protests... Yeah, I I beg to differ, son. Um, uh, When she protests, he laughs in her face and pretends he's not serious. Yeah. It's some real unhinged shit. (laughs) Yeah, I understand why they called this a rival. <laughs> there was a whole bunch of shit going on before they could even get to the wedding. <laughs> but anyway, um, when she insists that she loves his brother, he gets right in her face and asks, then why are you here then? Might have something to do with the assault she just suffered. I'm trying yeah, to do that. Elizabeth tries to leave the party. On the way to the door, she bumps into her sister who is watching the whole scene in boredom. Elizabeth once again attempts to apologize. Helena mocks her for being drunk, and when Elizabeth tells her that her day has been very hard, Helena smirks. She tells her that whenever life gets hard, Elizabeth runs away. And this is, this is true. Um, <laughs> see also Puck. Um, yeah. And then calls her a child. Elizabeth furiously tells her she has become exactly like their mother and storms off. (laughs) Max then comes up behind Helena and starts to hit on her. Helena, disgusted, blows him off. The party rages on and Max instead chooses one of the ladies in waiting as his victim. Bad time's the charm. Because God knows you just can't put it away for a night. Hope he enjoys the syphilis. Um, Sophie is alone in her room, feeling a lock of hair from what I assume is her dead daughter. I don't know. It looked the wrong colour. There's a knock on the door. Prince von Vasa enters, wearing a dead fox around his <laughs> neck. But despite the roadkill, Sophie looks thrilled to see him. He is very tall, to be fair. Yeah. Um. He asks if Franz loves his betrothed. Sophie responds with, as the sparrow loves daybreak, daybreak, 
which is both poetic and avian in yeah. nature. So tick that off for the themes list, everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, <laughs> he then asks her why he was invited to the wedding and suggests that this is a Mamma Mia situation <laughs> and that he is really Franz's father. <laughs> <laughs> at oh. this point i really groaned uh sophie <laughs> refuses to answer and instead tries to make a move on him because <laughs> that's actually the best way to distract a man yeah. he rejects her and leaves <laughs> oh snap <laughs> one of the maids in the palace approaches why am i the one that has to say <laughs> her name all the time? i did look up a video on how to produce pronounce pronounce <laughs> we can't even say english <laughs> this name it's leontine oh that makes more sense yes. one of the in the palace approaches uh leontine and hands over a pair of fancy shoes so the revolutionary <laughs> conspiracy has connections in the palace nice. just what you want to hear if you're <laughs> a member of the royal family <laughs> uh, the next morning and matron is furious to realize that elizabeth is not in her bed she turns on the ladies in waiting and notices that one of them has a hickey on her neck it's the one that was making out with max last night and it's a it's a doozy <laughs> it uh, it honestly looks like she was attacked by some kind of like she got bit by a werewolf or, yeah. or so, i mean it, it's it's uh, mm-mm. It doesn't look fun. Like, no. I don't think, like, that wasn't pleasant. Um, just like that, another lady in waiting bites the dust. <laughs> bite, bite. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice pun. Uh, we're already down to just nine ladies, people, and it's been less than 24 hours. <laughs> uh, Elena is, for some reason, also in the room. Never explained why she's there and notices that her sister is hiding behind the curtains. <laughs> she asks for a moment alone with her. Elizabeth is obviously distressed, and Elena admits that it doesn't bring her the joy that she thought it might. The two begin joking around again, and they apologise for their extremely hurtful comments last night. Reconciled with her sister, Elizabeth emerges from the curtains, and they do a cute little hug. Yeah. Upside down hug. Um, Elizabeth ah. begs Elena not to return to Bayern immediately, and instead she should stay at court with her because Elizabeth does not know who she can trust there. Clue: don't trust anyone. Just yeah. not, just no one. Across the palace, Franz Joseph is preparing for the wedding by putting on his fanciest medals and sash. His servant, Theo, tells him that his bride was seen arguing with his brother last night and was quite distressed, which immediately worries Franz. His brother's a dick! Two sisters, <laughs> knocked up, yeah. He knows, no scruples that one. Plus he destroys cakes, so... <laughs> Keep away from the wedding cake! <laughs> oh my god, let's see. <laughs> Elizabeth is, and there is no other word for it, hoisted <laughs> into her gigantic <laughs> wedding dress and prepares to leave the palace for the cathedral. Elena is next to her, offering her a hand and a smile, which seems to fortify the nervous-looking Elizabeth. Besides them, Ludovica uh, looks on proudly. She asks Sophie to look after her daughter. Sophie looks low-key horrified, because <laughs> <laughs> she needs a lot of work, after all. <laughs> Elizabeth climbs into the glass carriage. I mean... It was a glass carriage. <laughs> it looked like something out of Cinderella. Cinderella ain't got shit on that carriage. I know, right? Oh my god. So, glass carriage. That is to take her to the wedding, and just before the coach sets off, Franz appears on the other side of the glass. He raises a hand to the glass. They both reach for each other and share a smile before she is carried out of the palace grounds and into the streets of Vienna. The crowd waiting for her is large loud and kind of scary <laughs> they kind of scary no they're, they're they're terrifying uh they run along with the carriage and bang against the window panes elizabeth looks begins to look scared as the crowd noise increases the end oh my god the anxiety that ending <gasps> brought me I oh my like, god i was like no no don't do it just <laughs> Don't marry him. Just hide in the corner forever. (laughs) 
Oh my god. Okay, so what was your overall opinion on the episode? It seemed to just blaze by. Yeah. I I was like, wait, we're what we're done? No. We just got here. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it went sailing by. Um, you know, I thought, you know, I thought that the episode was a good one. Um, uh talk about uh pulling emotions into 15 different directions over the course of an hour and a bit, but uh all in all, I I thought it was a a good episode to give us the kind of the lay of the land yeah. that uh Elizabeth was going to be dealing with over the course of, you know, the next several years once she marries into this wackadoo family. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> How about you? Um yeah, I agree. I thought it was a great introduction to life at court. Mhm. Very different from her life in Bavaria. Um mm -hmm. and I thought we got some great insight into some of the more supporting characters. They did like a great job of fleshing out Sophie and Elena and I guess Max. Oh, Max. Oh. Um, uh, even Leotin. I can't, oh my god, I can't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leotin. <laughs> Leotin. Think about the opera singer Leontine Price. Leontin. That makes more Leontin. sense. Yeah, yes. okay. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a really good like building block of an episode and just visually I thought this was just stunning like this show yes. is just incredible um it had a kind of like again a gothic vibe which I find an interesting choice for them to make because it's usually like like with the sissy films they were all like really bright and like technicolor and the palaces were all like white and gold and like they've definitely chosen to take like a darker aesthetic uh, yeah. choice <laughs> yes <laughs> which i love and it yeah and it really suits the, the there's an <laughs> ominous yeah i mean it, there's an ominous feel about yeah. this show uh and you pick up on it in the in the first episode yeah i wouldn't say that it feels oppressive but when you mentioned you know the anxiety oh, that God. you experienced um <sighs> at the end uh yeah, I, it it's just building. <laughs> it's building. I'm I'm almost afraid about the wedding at this point. <laughs> I mean, damn! It's a Catholic <laughs> wedding. I think the scariest thing you'll find is just how long it takes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> She'll come out like oh, I'm thirty five now. <laughs> and how in the world is she supposed to kneel in that thing? Because there's a lot of kneeling. She is gonna wobble. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Hell, she could fall over and the dress would keep her up. No, I just don't understand how she's gonna stand back up again. Yeah. Oh, help her <laughs> friends. Okay, well, we we have a lot to look forward to next Oh, week. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how did she fit all of that dress in that tiny glass carrot? That was, that was what I was worried about. I was like, yeah. they've, got, they've got to have, like, folded that skirt up before she got in. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Women struggle to get in and out of a limousine. Can you imagine it go like a glass oh. carriage? Oh anyway, we are focusing yeah. on the wrong things. <laughs> Storylines. So, uh, Elizabeth adaptation to court life. I mean, as predicted, this was not a smooth transition. <laughs> no. Um, no. Elizabeth came into this episode incredibly naive like remember mm -hmm. that first scene where she tells her father oh franz likes me as i am yeah that's when i knew <laughs> <laughs> that's when i knew this was not going to be a good <laughs> good time this was not going to be fun for her i mean you know that that kind of phrase is is kind of the equivalent of what could possibly go wrong yeah. you know it's like you just know not to say it because once once you utter the words, they're out in the in ether, and they'll come back and bite you. So, uh huh, what a mess! I thought the scene with the sacred ritual was oh. like truly horrific, like traumatic. Yeah, and the way everyone just brushed it off was yeah. appalling, but felt very realistic. I was like, yeah, that sounds like something people would just uh huh. 
pretend never happened because it's uncomfortable to think about. Even Franz, you could see he was like, oh, that sounds bad. Let me not think about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it, the fact that nobody prepared her for it. Yeah. You know, it, like, you know, her mother didn't tell her that something like that was going to happen. Uh, matron didn't give her a clue. Uh, it's like, no, it was like, it's like it's some, some little secret that you don't get to find out until after it's done. And that was just cold hearted as cold hearted could get. Like in the biography that I'm reading there, it's like, as soon as she became engaged, everyone in her life was like, okay, shit, we've got to prepare her for this now. So she got like history <laughs> lessons. She had to learn all these different languages and dance lessons. And like mm -hmm. her days were like filled with instruction. Uh, and by contrast in the show, she's been given absolutely no preparation. She yeah. doesn't know any of the rules. <laughs> she's mm -mm. just showing up and winging it. And it's like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like, uh, you might want to just kind of take a step back and maybe pick up an etiquette book or something. Yeah. Oh, like, I don't know. I Not to, like, victim blame here, but, like, you, you want to prepare yourself for the incoming fuckery. Because I think part <laughs> of the problem here is that she's trying to adjust to this incredible shift in her life. And, like, it's only been, like, it's not even been 24 hours. And, like, she hasn't mentally prepared for it at all. She's come in just expecting everything to be rosy. And it's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to Helene about this, because she knew. I bet she had, <laughs> yeah. she, like, knew about the ceremony, the sacred oh, ritual. Oh, I'm whatever. sure. I mean, a at least the way that they're playing it uh, in this film, you know, Helene was the one prepared to get this proposal. Yeah. And so. You know, if she was going to be the one that was on the receiving end of this proposal and everybody knew it, then, you know, when she showed up at that uh, birthday party wearing that gorgeous red dress, she was ready. She was like, come on, let's get it over with. <laughs> and then when Franz Joseph decides, nah, I kind of want to get with your sister, you know, of course worldview completely crumbles um and elizabeth's also kind of goes through this 180 degree turn of turnaround um but yeah that, it's not really uh, clear how much time has passed as well that's very true because it doesn't it's not clear in the uh the way that the the story is going uh, are, are, we, are we dealing with pole dark time again I don't think so, because the previous episode, the beginning, it said, because um, it, it had the flashback, remember, and it started with the mm -hmm. wedding, and then uh, it said uh, the summer before, and uh. I think this episode would take place in spring, uh -huh. um, so it would have been like, a v and he's written 44 letters, so we're <laughs> not talking like <laughs> a couple of weeks. It's like she's had months to prepare for this transition, mm -hmm. and I bet you what she did was ride off with her horse. <laughs> <laughs> New horse, because, you know. <laughs> R.O.P. Buck. Yeah. Um, yeah, but she's going to be an empress. She can have all the horses she likes. Yes. Um, speaking of Helena, um, yes. I was really enjoying, like, Snarky. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't think that they were going to make up this quick, um, you know, uh, especially after the the shock that she received. Um, you know, and Elena's holding a pair of, of scissors and looking like she's going to do some serious damage to her hair. She did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that wig's not good, okay? <laughs> Oh God! Um, so you know, I didn't figure that they were gonna uh, get to the point where they're uh, hugging and forgiving um, by the the end of this episode. Uh, I figured that it, the I figured the snark would go on for a little while. But when you think about it, I mean, Elizabeth really does need an ally, which you know, and I'm glad that she asked. Uh, Elena to stay with her yeah. whether she does or not no idea. I think she must do otherwise they wouldn't have like put that in that episode because I would yeah. say like one thing about the script 
I've noticed from doing the recaps is it's really tight. Like they won't drop in information that's mm-hmm. not relevant later on. Um, I think it kind of makes sense for them to make up now, though, because like a Elena is the the older sister, and she is seeing a very distressed and fucked up younger sister like hiding in the corner. Yeah, on her wedding day, I think like any older sister at that moment would be like, you know, no matter how hurt she is she's going to um mm-hmm. step in and try to comfort her and i yeah. also think unlike bridgerton it mm-hmm. she didn't really have like an emotional connection to fran so yeah. she's really like mourning the loss of position more than she is mourning mm-hmm. the relationship that's a really good point so she, it's it's sort of easier for her to be like eh, you know i'm upset about it but I'll get over it, you know. Um, yeah. And I thought, like, uh, again, like, this relationship, mm-hmm. very, very cute. Love mm-hmm. watching it. I mean, the moment when they were fighting as well, I, they felt like such sisters when they were like, yes. they knew the exact things to hurt each other. Yes. Like, just like mother. <laughs> it's like, like, zing, zing, zing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, like, the line about how she she's like a child that always has to run away. I was like, mm-hmm. that's so true! <laughs> <laughs> like, like they, they really, like, get each other and they're very yeah. close and it's really it's really nice. Um, yeah. How, how, how about uh, uh, Ms. Sophie? There are some still waters that run deep. Uh, how interesting is this character? I right? just, like... Because, like, traditionally... She's cast as sort of like the cartoon villain uh, to Sissy's cartoon princess. Mm -hmm. Um, I think in part because she was a woman with authority in a period of time where that was a huge threat to Mm -hmm. society. Yeah. Um, See Catherine de' Medici for Mm -hmm. reference. Uh, This version of Sophie is just really likable she's complicated she Mm -hmm. definitely does and says things that i'm like oh god what (sighs) um but i think she just makes so much sense to me like her priorities um are all about protecting her son and the crown Mm -hmm. and establishing a legacy and that's not an insignificant worry here when you like have the context of the revolution that happened mm-hmm. it's like four year four-ish years ago mm-hmm. and they came very mm-hmm. close to killing him remember yeah. the next car yep. like next car i think all of her choices she's making are politically motivated um more than necessarily based on like the well-being of her family Mm-hmm. Um, but then I think she sees those two things as intertwined um, yeah. because they are a political entity as well as a family and I think that's like really hard <laughs> for us as a modern audience to understand mm-hmm. yeah I just find her fascinating and the whole backstory with her her dead yes. daughter oh. mm-hmm. were you like what the fuck when the, <laughs> yeah. the episode started yeah I was like, wait, 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 hold, hold up. What is this? So, yeah, that was, that was a bit of a twist. And then I wonder how that factors into her relationship with Elizabeth as well. Hmm. She's having a daughter-in-law for the first time. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see where that goes. Ooh, it's not going to be easy. And like how freaked out she was when uh, Elizabeth's mother was like, please look after her. She was like, I don't know if I can do that. That's the exactly. Seem- <laughs> exactly. It's like, um, you know something? I'm kind of barely hanging on to this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Because I wonder, I wonder if her daughter would have been about the same age as uh, Elizabeth, if she had lived. Yeah, actually, I think so. Because she's mm-hmm. about, she was four when she died, and this is about like 12, 13 years before, so yeah, yeah, around the same age, yeah. Yeah. That must be yeah. incredibly difficult for her. Yeah, and especially if, yeah, especially if, you know, the little girl was, you know, very um, uh, cheeky. cheeky and mischievous and, and that kind of thing. I could imagine that Sophie would see 
uh, her late daughter in Elizabeth um, and be pretty troubled about it. But we'll see. We'll see where this one goes. Um, and um, my guess is that uh, Franz Joseph will s- not depend so much on his mother yeah. um, as he has in the past. Uh, and especially within the um, the cabinet and, uh, you know, the, some of the decisions that he has to make. I think, you know, we saw the, the first the first one, which was no mummy. I am not going to side with Russia. We're not joining the war. And she was clearly upset about that. Speaking of weird family dynamics, oh. um, Max again tried to pursue Elizabeth this week. Dude. What's interesting about Max is that he's incredibly smart, mm-hmm. but he uses that for evil. <laughs> yes. Like, it's very manipulative. That story about Marie Antoinette. Uh-huh. I, yeah. You'll be unsurprised to know was complete bullshit. Of course. Um, As we covered in our previous podcast about the Sofia Coppola movie, um, mm-hmm. Everyone go out and listen to that That's such a good movie Yeah, um, yeah that was when fun Marie arrived in France, remember, as a teenager They stripped her of absolutely everything They mm-hmm. took away her dog Like, she wasn't allowed to walk onto uh, French territory Even in, like, Austrian underwear Let alone jewellery mm-hmm. And then, when she died She was living in relative poverty In a jail mm-hmm. cell And mm-hmm. um, there's, like a handful of items that she had and they were when they executed her that were like itemized and recorded mm-hmm. so we know what she had in her possession and it wasn't there was like there was the no expensive... yeah there was no fancy schmancy necklace <laughs> the most expensive thing she owned i think was like a hairbrush so like the idea that they would like <laughs> chop her head off while she was wearing yeah. some expensive ass necklace mm-hmm is bullshit. What's yeah. interesting is like, why would Max make up this story? Maybe it's to try and inject some anxiety about becoming royal in her. Uh-huh. And then we later see that reflected in her absolute freak out while she's in the glass carriage. Yeah. Understandable. Um, <sighs> but God, when you like, again, put it in the context of the revolution that was five years ago when they nearly killed Franz, marrying into this family comes with a lot of fucking yes. danger and anxiety. And I yeah. think, like, Elizabeth didn't feel that way until it was planted there by Max. Yeah. Which is so fucking reprehensible. He is just... <laughs> he's a piece of shit. He's a little... He is a sociopath. He really Don't is. we always find a sociopath in these uh, series that we watch? <laughs> I swear, we yeah. always went, yep, yep, there he is. There's a sociopath right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Very it's gaslighty. Just, it's too bad he's got such curly hair. I know. <laughs> I think, like, as a teenager, I, it sort of sort of occurred to me that I would have been a Max fan. Mm-hmm. If I was 16, uh, because the actor is just doing such an incredible job. Yeah. And he has such pathos. Even when he's like being a debauched piece of shit, I'm like, oh, he's sad though. <laughs> so I think as a teenager, I would have been like, oh, but he's good deep down. And now, like, <laughs> uh, in my old age of 32, I'm like, <laughs> oh, he's a piece of shit. Stay away yeah. from him. It's like, oh, yeah. He, he no bueno. No bueno, man. No matter how sad he is, it doesn't justify any of his actions. I don't yeah. feel like, ugh. And I think, you know, last week we were like, why is why is Franz trusting him? And now I'm like, is Franz trusting him? Or is he <laughs> trying? I think, like, is he just trying to keep him close to him to try and get him under control? Yeah. Because he, he sees Max spiraling and he's mm-hmm. like, maybe if I give him some authority, it might ease some of his obvious... His prankery. <sighs> and um, he'll stop stupping everything that moves. He won't be. Max. That, that, that makes, yeah, I definitely got like a sense this, this episode that Fran sort of... It's like the mirror image of um, mm-hmm. his brother. Mm-hmm. Max has gone one, in one direction and Franz has gone in the complete opposite to try and yeah. be like, see, mummy, 
See, maybe one of us is really good. <laughs> oh, they gosh. really need to go into family therapy. <laughs> yes, Lord. Oh my God. Uh, I know we we've been talking a little bit about Franz and Max. Um, what did you think of the uh, the whole confrontation that uh, Franz had with him, uh, and the way and the way that he went about doing it? I thought that was very very smart. I think Franz might be like much smarter than we gave him credit for yep. in the first episode. I was yep. like, oh, because the way he he also introduced the prop, the Crimean War situation with his mother. Mm-hmm. It was like he didn't approach her before the cabinet meeting. Mm-hmm. They were going to discuss it in a way where other people could make his point for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> this guy is actually learning. Sh- oh my god, France. <laughs> <laughs> Am I a friend, Stan? No. I think so. I think so. Um, yeah, just the way he sort of handled both Max and Sophie was like incredibly smart. God, there are a lot to handle. This poor mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. The Crimean War, you know, and it, it's you know for those of us that are uh, a bit of the history wonks. Um, you know, it was really kind of cool to see how we wind up talking about, um, that pretty pivotal war. Um, yeah. I was sort of surprised at where everyone ended up. I mean, everyone, just the three family members Mm -hmm. were taking very different stances and what that said about them as people, as well as what it, the political aspect of it of Mm -hmm. um, what was going on yeah max called it the crimean war Mm -hmm. was a complete clusterfuck for russia um let's not mention current events but (laughs) 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 lasting impact yeah (laughs) they did lose uh but there's more nuance to the situation than i think max isn't taking into account when in when they're talking about it yeah um a lot of the stuff I've read about has said that Franz's decision not to join the Allies was a mistake in retrospect because mm-hmm. they did win. Like he did alienate both sides by choosing that. But yeah. Given that the state of the country following like the revolution and like starvation and like the deprivation in the country, mm-hmm. do you want to be? Getting involved in the Crimean fucking war? <laughs> uh, no thanks. <laughs> it's like one of the most unspeakably awful wars of all time. Yeah. <laughs> How about we just not do that, Max? Maybe yeah. we uh we sit this one out, my friend. Sophie wanting to ally her uh, ally herself with the Russians is bonkers. Yeah, absolutely bonkers. But then again, I think that speaks to her perspective of wanting to like the protectionism of wanting to keep um old alliances Mm -hmm. she's grew up in a time where russia with this great superpower and the weaning power of the east is not something she's really very alive to yeah and i think that's just sad a little bit like she's out of touch with the youth It's a weird, weird way to think of war, but you know. Hey, it's the young that are gonna go fight the war, so and then die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'd yeah. be interesting to see where this all goes and if there's gonna be more. Yeah, agree. Well, we'll see. Okay, let's let's have some fun. Uh, Franz and uh, Elizabeth's romance. I mean, there wasn't like a lot of it, but what we got was just so sweet. <laughs> So cute! Oh my god, that that Walt scene will live oh on in infamy god. in my heart. Oh my god, that was just delicious, and I won't be able to hear that piece of music without seeing that scene in my head as they're waltzing around with her in that giant dress. How did they not throw up at the end, though? I was I like, know. oh my god, I know. I, I would have been done, but uh, yeah, I think that they're just lovely and. The scene where uh, he comes up and puts his hand against the carriage window, oh. and she puts hers neck, uh, you know, matches his pose on the other side, and you know, just the way that they're looking at each other, and 
<laughs> that scene was like simultaneously adorable and also broke my heart. I was uh-huh. like, why is this sad? Yeah. Why am I so sad right <laughs> now? <laughs> and it's because your body was trying to tell you, Rita, the next scene is going to be problematical. <laughs> Don't watch. <laughs> I think I think as well it's like because when as soon as I saw that ca- that um carriage I was like it's a cage. It's a yeah. cage. It looks like a bird cage. Mm-hmm. So then like when you have her um in like a cage like setting and him reaching his hand out to her I was like this is like a really dark metaphor mm-hmm. and I don't love it. <laughs> I think like maybe about how her becoming an empress or something will separate them and I'm just like I can't take that can we just have they're getting married can I have happiness for five seconds yes without just having a to worry? little tiny bit of happiness please <laughs> just like without worrying about the symbolic significance of everything I just would like just let them make like just let them make out matron they yes. were happy Oh, yes. I just just want them to be happy. <laughs> I mean, the fact that he was like feeling up a dead horse's hair. Yeah. At the beginning, like he is just smitten. He's besotted. <laughs> He's besotted I, by his that's Elizabeth. My favorite kind. I love an obsessed mm-hmm. man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I think you and I love the movie um, Young uh, Victoria so much. Oh yeah. Oh god. By the way, they that Albert in that movie and mm-hmm. Franz in this one, very similar vibes. Like yeah. a nerdy prince. We love mm-hmm. it. We are mm-hmm. here for an obsessed German man, like <laughs> <laughs> Oh God. But, they yeah. would have been related, wouldn't they? Because they were Yeah, I think so. Oh my I god. I think so. What do you think they're like first cousins or something? Probably something. everyone's first cousin. <laughs> yeah. One thing we haven't mentioned is that Sissy or Elizabeth and France are first cousins. Oh god. Um because Ludovica and Sophie are sisters. So in the back of my mind I'm quietly disgusted, but in I'm just gonna pretend it's not happening. <laughs> I'm looking up the family tree, and I think I'm I'm going to be uh, disgusted. Yeah, there's actually a video, and I've watched videos done by this person before on YouTube about how inbred was uh, Empress City too much, very inbred, too much, <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that we could probably have a uh, quite the long conversation about just how messed up this whole thing is. If we want to go down that route, we may. Another thing, they had to get a special dispensation from the Pope to get married because even the Catholic Church knew (laughs) that was fucked up. (laughs) Oh, God. Slightly pleasanter question mark conversation. The revolutionaries. The revolution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I really am enjoying this burgeoning friendship. Mm-hmm. And I think Elizabeth have. Yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a very interesting one that that uh, she finds herself in. You know, uh, did you notice that all of the other ladies in uh, waiting had yeah yeah were fairer than her? And then they were like, "Oh, she's the exotic one." Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's like great. I'm exotic. Ooh. What do you think the actual plan here is? By the way, are they gonna like? Try and indoctrinate Elizabeth or something like. I don't know. I mean, they all seem to be really excited about the fact that you know she is coming in and is like this new distraction um, that is going to be uh, kind of a key will play a key role in starting this revolution. Um, you know, are they thinking that it's going to be something similar to the French Revolution where, you know, they're going to wind up hunting down the, the, the royals and all that kind of stuff? I don't know. I don't know. We I, need more I, intel. <laughs> yeah, I like I'm going to need itemized list of the yeah. <laughs> because it doesn't seem very like well thought out at the moment. Yeah. Like, she is becoming much closer to sympathizing with Elizabeth and seeing things from mm-hmm. her point of view and how difficult it is. Yeah. Um, 
and eventually there's going to have to be some kind of a decision made. Mm-hmm. And, and that's going to be like conflict for both of them. I mean, do you, if Elizabeth ever finds out, she's going to also be heartbroken because that's like literally her only friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, this is so incredibly sad from all angles. <laughs> I mean, the the you know the the scene that shall not be named. Um, I, I found that that moment to be so incredibly touching. Yeah. Um, that you know in this in this moment she's you know Elizabeth is like grappling for for some semblance humanity. of humanity. Yeah. Yeah, and um the she winds up finding her hand. I think, I think, um, I'm wondering whether or not the dude that is all Viva La Revolution, um, whether or not the, you know, he and Leontine are gonna be seeing eye to eye for too much longer. I mean, it was the first episode of the plan and there was already some kind of tension, shall yeah. we say. Yeah. So this is going to quickly become a problem. Mm-hmm. Well, depending on what their plan is. Again, we don't know what to <laughs> Please yeah. explain. Please uh, give us a clue in the next episode, but don't take up too much time because it's called the wedding and we want the wedding. <laughs> we want the wedding. Yeah. yeah. We need the after no last week's... No revelations until yeah. after the wedding. Yeah. Um, after what you put us through this, the, you know, this time. Mm-mm. No, we need we need wedding. We Thank need you. wedding. Yes. Um, we saw a little bit of wedding, so I was happy, but not that happy. Not you know? that happy. <laughs> because, because you know, they showed us a little tiny bit, and then, you know, the other bit where you're like, oh, this is so exciting. They put her in this glass cage and send her out in with all the... Was, even when she was putting on the dress, I was like, oh my <sighs> uh-huh. god, they're hoisting her in. That mm-hmm. dress is too big. Like I just felt suffocated, and it looks like a cage. Just like the whole thing was just how not not good vibes. The vibes. How many was times off. are they going to beat that metaphor to death? <laughs> Speaking of, oh my god, the themes. Oh um, god, obviously the glass carriage. Yeah, yeah. Mm-mm. Um, the line about Franz loving Elizabeth as a sparrow loves daybreak. I was mm-hmm. like, okay. Well, yeah. she's obviously been reading the the poetry, so she she knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. And you know, her finding that exotic bird. You know, whatever <sighs> kind of bird is that? Um. Yeah. All right. I'm beginning clobbered by uh, Bird metaphors. Things. And uh, quite frankly, I would like to propose something with regards Ooh. to our rating system for oh. this uh, oh, series. <laughs> it needs to be birds. Okay. Needs we'll to be birds. birds. Okay. Yes. Yeah. How many There's swallows no are there? Anyway. Nobody's wearing hats in the show yet, and I'm very disappointed. Like, you know we love a hat. I know, but with the wigs that these people are wearing, yeah, true. I mean, the, the also, matron's wig. How can you wig. wear those, the dresses oh. so heavy? Can you imagine sticking a hat on top of that? Oh, no. I mean, the, the matron's wig really reminded me of the, the wig that, um, uh, Helena Bonham Carter wore in the Tim Burton, uh, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, oh my God, that is straight out of the, uh, costume closet for that <laughs> one. The straw doll thing. So I did a lot of Googling. Oh, um, God bless you. Uh, there are many cultures that have similar traditions, but mm-hmm. I think she's referencing a Slavic pagan tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, it still survives in like the Czech Republic and Poland and Lithuania, and obviously Slovakia. If you know the little straw doll is in that culture an effigy of Marzana, the goddess of death and winter, oh. and her death at the end of winter summons the rebirth of the goddess Kostrama, who brings spring and fertility oh my um, gosh so the effigy the straw effigy is often made by children and it could range in sizes from like the size of the small puppet to like huge life-size dummies i've seen mm-hmm. pictures of them burning um the communities will like have this huge bonfire and set the doll on fire mm-hmm. there's also versions of this where they will burn the dummy 
and then drown it, which I think is overkill, like the literal yeah. definition of overkill. Yeah, um, it it sounds like they're just carrying on the whole, you know, <laughs> she's a witch! <laughs> she's a witch! Burn her! Then drown her! And if she drowns, then she was innocent. Oops! <laughs> well, um, why I mention this under themes is because the ritual represents the end of the dark days of winter, uh-huh. the victory over death, and the welcoming of spring and like okay. a rebirth. So okay. this idea kind of reminded me of the relationship the public have with Sophie and Elizabeth. Hmm. The Ma- Marzana figure in the show would be Sophie because, yeah. this, especially in this episode, because they link her with the her daughter and death and mm-hmm. she's always in these dark colors that would make elizabeth the spring she's yeah. like the symbol of fertility she's probably gonna have like little babies mm-hmm. that can repopulate the Habsburg lineage mm-hmm. um <laughs> with with a lot more inbreddedness but go on <laughs> <laughs> anyway so i was kind of like oh so that's just what came to mind after a, like a five minute Wikipedia search. Interesting, <laughs> isn't it? Like, because it's got to mean something, Michelle. <laughs> they wouldn't just randomly stick in the straw. Dog. <laughs> I was like, "What does this mean?" And I found meaning in this madness. Okay. Oh, funny. Oh, god. Very interesting. I know. Isn't there there? I seem to recall burning giant goats. There's so many, like, here's the problem I had with trying to whittle this down. Practically yeah. every country has some kind of relationship with straw dolls and burning <laughs> them. And there's like a huge, like in Scotland, they do like, you know, the Wicker Man shit yeah. is based on actual tradition. <laughs> but I was trying to find a tradition that was in the Austrian Empire at that point, and I was like, definitely, definitely Slavic. And then I'm wondering if they all think, they must all think Leontine's Slavic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, could be. Ah, I found it. It's the Yule Goat in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> they burn it like midwinter. Why would it they do is, that to a it's, it's done. It's like a, uh, like a Christmas time ish. Yeah. Our pagan ceremonies are really interesting to me because mm. I come from a country that basically tried to wipe out all of its paganism thanks to mm-hmm. the Spanish Inquisition. They were yeah. really like, no fucking paganism here. <laughs> and then, like, all these other countries get to burn Yule goats. And it's like, it's not fair. <laughs> oh, um, my gosh. <laughs> We've got wildly <laughs> off track. Um, what were some of your favorite scenes? Um, uh, the waltz scene. Yeah. Um, that was wonderful. Um, I thought that um, the scene where she arrives and she goes to give him a kiss and everybody gasped. Oh. Um, what you know, a perfect thought, dist- distillation of their entire relationship. I know. I know. <laughs> These people are into each other. Everyone gasps. Yeah, everybody. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> See that in comparison to uh, his mother Sophie's uh, or Sophia's. I'm getting all familiar with her name. Hey, Sophie, what's happening? It um, is Sophie, though. If, if you Google it, it's Sophie. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, her uh, reaction to her husband uh, clearly. She doesn't want any of that, um, you know, and you compare that to Franz and uh, Elizabeth, and they're just ass well, over that. tea kether, tea, tea Maybe kettle. that's what that's why the matron lady was so aghast because she's never seen a royal couple that are actually into each other. <laughs> she's like, oh my god, does this really work? Do people really <laughs> feel this way? That reminds me of my favorite line in the whole episode was um when prince van vasa was like in love is that allowed and sophie's like we're trying something new (laughs) okay even though the the scene where she's um having to try on all of the dresses and you know the all of the crazy corseting that that's going on the, the dresses look absolutely exquisite but you know you see just what she has to go through in order to be able to to wear them and then to be expected to to walk 
and talk <laughs> to people in in these crazy dresses? I don't think so. One of my favorite scenes, apart from the waltz, was um, the scene in Max's party because oh. I thought it just had the best costume design and decoration, mm-hmm. and I loved how they managed to make like relatively tame behavior uh, seem like really kind of really scandalous. Crazy. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I was like, <gasps> um, all and these now people. Respect, I'm like, I was like having crazier parties at fifteen, but. <laughs> I was still like watching it, like, going, <gasps> like, oh my gosh, this is just a hedonistic affair. Blah! <laughs> yeah. It's like, ooh, is what that, is it? They're I like drinking. The on the- oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Max had to go all vampire and chew on that uh, young woman's neck. Ew. <sighs> yeah. Uh, least favorite scene, I think we can agree on this the scene that shall not be named. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that was at least dramatically compelling. The mm-hmm. scene with the two revolutionaries meeting in the garden was actually, like, straight up dull. I was like, oh, yeah. I already know she's a revolutionary. Do yeah. Not, <laughs> do not beat like, me over the head with this. It's like, with precious film time. Come on, people. Let's, Come on. let's go. Let's go. Um, oh. I felt like the scene where Franz met that Englishman was mm-hmm. random. By the way. When they said they were talking to a Stevenson, I assumed that it was George Stevenson, because that's literally the only railway guy I've ever heard of. Um, oh. Because he's like called the father of way- railways or something very famous. Oh. But then I did a quick Wikipedia search, found out that he died five years before <laughs> the show is set. So I was like, Oops. weird. No, <laughs> but then further down the Wikipedia, I realized he had a son. Ah. Robert Stevenson, also into railways. Uh-huh. If you Google search Robert Stevenson, there's a photograph and they look, I mean, oh my God, uncanny. The guy really? they got to play him looks exactly mm-hmm. the same as the photograph. So I've got to give like shout out to the hair. Shout out to makeup. casting. I mean, they are killing it. They're killing it. And also, like, for Johann Strauss and, like, all the little minor characters, just really, really incredible mm-hmm. d- uh, attention to detail. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Favorite costumes and location? Well, uh, the, the the castle just looks... I know. Oh, my God. Astounding. Uh, is that castle still standing, or did it wind up um, um, suffering damage from the war? You can still visit it today. I would Google that. It's spelled C S C H O N B R U N N. Google it now. Holy crap! Yeah, it's fucking huge. <laughs> you, you, when you Google it, you can see the interiors. They're slightly different from what mm-hmm. you see. They're much lighter. Mm-hmm. I think that's w- when I'm talking about the decision to make it like slightly darker, I think that works better for the show. I'm not yeah. sure these interiors would work with the tone, but it's just fucking huge. Um, wow. And you can still go there. I'm getting like suggested Instagram posts from, um, they really want me to visit. <laughs> They're like, visit this palace now. Cause you are watching the Holy Empress. And, it's like, and they've still got all of like, uh, Elizabeth's dresses on display and shit. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, kind of like, to be fair, shit's all over Versailles. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, But then again, like, Versailles fell into disrepair for a couple hundred years. Like, they've properly looked after. Look how big the gardens are. I know. They They did a really great job of reconstructing the grounds, I thought. I was like, you cannot tell that it's cgi <laughs> no no they they they've done an amazing job um oh they have an orangery we know what happens in those orangeries <laughs> nothing good happens nothing good um, happens in an orangery <laughs> oh. so for like um favorite costumes obviously oh. the wedding dress even though the wedding dress now makes me scared i mm-hmm. just associate it yeah i thought that the the dress that she wore to the uh reception like her yeah. initial reception, I thought that was stunning. 
very like modernist yes <laughs> yes very <laughs> much so but then i also like uh sophie was wearing like a dog tooth pattern in one of the in one of the scenes and then she had like this really like modern necklace and it's weird how they've infused like very modern aesthetics Mm-hmm. into these silhouettes that are really traditional and it just all works when they were like these these are like cutting edge looks from paris and st petersburg i was like yeah i believe that <laughs> yeah i mean they they are just stunning um yeah. but uh yeah the the wedding dress uh looks amazing um i loved her little bohemian rebel look yeah uh, with the little vest, though I was kind of like, how are you doing that without, like, this is before the advent of tit tape. Yeah, I'm I know. Brave. <laughs> oh my god. But, uh, yeah, the, the uh, I am, uh, a friend of mine, uh, was talking to them about, uh, you know, new period, uh, dramas that, uh, I was watching. And I said that we had just started this podcast on the Empress. And she says, okay, well, how does it compare with Bridgerton? I said, well, they're like two different animals. Um, yeah. Empress is a drama. <laughs> it's a drama. Uh, whereas Bridgerton, you know, yeah, it's a drama, but it's... It's definitely on the soap opera yeah. edge of drama. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, yeah, and she asked me, you know, well, what what about the costumes? How how do the costumes uh, compare? And I said, much better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, much hands down, without hesitation, much better. But I think, like, also, just this is I have an aversion to the Regency period fashion. Um, yes, <laughs> that just like oh, just some fresh silhouette. It feels yeah. so nice to have mm-hmm. like, oh look at the waists people have waists <laughs> <laughs> just like oh I, Franz is wearing the same outfit over and over again and I don't even care <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. oh gosh um as far as and the location of course the the castle um I one thing I noticed um on rewatch they put all of uh the servants of the party they were all in these little sailor costumes Oh. Like some weird spark in my brain reminded me that Max is actually the commander in chief of the Austrian Navy. Oh. Which is like, and I was like, oh, that's such a small, de- like, background detail for them yeah. to be using this. But it makes me love them so much. <laughs> like, <I'm> like, <laughs> like, they did their work, they researched, they're like, we're gonna put this little nugget in for people who are Wikipedia searching, like Rita. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and like, when I think like if this is definitely a show where you go back and rewatch it. I bet you it's even yeah. better. Yeah. Um, performer of the episode. You go first because I can't choose. No, uh, uh-uh, I went first. Yeah, I went first last time. Oh, okay. Well, ah, ah, ah. I I think I have to. As much as I hate Max, I thought the performance, uh, oh god, I'm trying to pronounce his name, Johannes Nussbaum. Nussbaum. Yes. Um, very, like, he's such a good actor. Like, yeah. He makes me hate him, but also sort of understand him. He's showing, he's showing, um, character depth. Yeah, he was terrific. I thought he was great. But I mean, like, the best performance was obviously Devrim. Um, mm-hmm. as Elizabeth, because I mean that she girl scene. went through it. Yeah, yeah, girl went through drunk, it. This episode, you know how hard it is to play drunk convincingly, and she did the right kind of stumbling, sort of mild mm-hmm. sleepiness, um, yep. <laughs> which I definitely relate to as a drinker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I would agree. Uh, Devrin was terrific. Um, really enjoyed. Uh, her and then the the uh, chemistry between her and her sister later oh, yeah. in the episode. Um, I thought that was really well done. Um, but yeah, Max Johannes, don't make me like you, boy. Mm-mm. I will. I I will have a crisis if you do. I mean, <laughs> whenever you feel sympathy for him, just remember <laughs> that he tries to. Inv- 
take over Mexico and become the emperor of Mexico. What the hell? Yeah, that happens. Um, we need a spinoff where he <laughs> he tries to <laughs> he gets he, he he has a weird life. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll yeah. say he ends up killed naturally because why the fuck are you trying to take over Mexico? <laughs> Yeah, and, and of course he gets killed. I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me if he got killed because he was in someone, uh, someone's uh, uh, bed that he shouldn't have been in. But I'm assuming it's it's more of a, you know, it's... Navy, you know, heroic death that winds up happening to him. Oh, no, no. Nothing. No? Nothing so heroic. Uh, okay. Well, all right. That's fine. I think it's like Napoleon III or something is like, hey. Do you want to be emperor of, of Mexico? And he's like, sure. And then it turns out he can't hold on to Mexico because he's not fucking Mexican. <laughs> oh. Maybe you shouldn't try to colonize some places, maybe. Maybe? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a good idea not just, to. Just in case you were wondering if if Max was really a piece of shit in real life, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Oh my goodness. So, how many birdies? I think I'm gonna go with four and a half. I have knocked it half a point from last week because I did not feel there was enough romance to satisfy my soul. Um, mm-hmm. but very good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Four and a half. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty simple. Um, uh, inbox time. Let's see. First letter. I've watched the whole season, so I don't want to touch on details too much because I don't want to let any spoilers slip. Thank you. Uh, but I want to mention how beautiful this show is. The costumes, the settings, everything is lavish, but feels real. There is one one moment of not so wonderful CGI work later in the season, but it is forgivable considering the rest is chef's kiss. Uh, also, I wanted to point out that the audio dubbing and sound is that what it's called for this show is excellent. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I think the voice actors that they chose really match the actual actors, and I could easily forget that the actors were speaking another language. I was listening to the English translation. I sometimes find it difficult to watch some foreign language shows because I find that the audio translations aren't that great and they really throw me out of the story. I was hesitant to start this show for that very reason, but I'm so glad I did. I really enjoy listening to you ladies and look forward to your thoughts on the rest of the season. From Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. I would never, ever watch a show with dubs. I absolutely cannot do it. It hurts me to my soul. <laughs> like, <laughs> dubbing is wrong and I don't believe in it. <laughs> now, are you watching this with the uh, English dubs or are you watching the German with subtitles? I always watch with subtitles. I don't understand why, like, there are some times when I think the subtitle work on shows are terrible, but I would still mm-hmm. rather watch it with subtitles and try and pick up the nuances of the acting mm-hmm. with subtitles in their original language than try and put a whole other voice on top of them because I think mm. that you don't get the acting moments. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll try watching it with uh, just the subtitles because um, I've been watching it with the uh, English dub. Oh my um, God, don't do that! It's, it's <laughs> well done. It's well done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that with my K-dramas. So those, are, um, those are just... I yeah, think you'll find but... that you actually understand quite a lot of the German. Oh. Um, a, a lot of the words are quite similar to English. Okay. I think, like, I wa- okay, admittedly, I watch quite a few different German shows, and I think, um, so, like, there's a, instead of saying, like, of course, they'll say, like, naturally, and you'll be like, mm-hmm. oh, that's similar to English. So, like, there's, like, similar things. I don't know. I just think it's, uh, I again, I also acknowledge that I, as a kid, I grew up watching English shows with Portuguese subtitles. So I, I'm mm-hmm. like very much in just like used to subtitle culture. Like the idea of 
dubbing just freaks me the fuck out. I'm like, no, where is this voice coming from? That's not what you sound like. <laughs> like I'm not used to dubbing at all. So like, it's uh, I don't know. It's it just make it like it literally like when I see dubbing. I feel a bit sick. Like there's just something mm. not. It feels uncanny. There's something like wrong. <laughs> you can mm-hmm. always tell that's not their voices. Yeah. Delve into my like deep psychological trauma with dubbing. Um, <laughs> might cut that out. Um, <laughs> hey, Rita and Michelle, I'm so excited that you're both delving into another series. I'm also glad to hear that Rita is ready to dig deep and explain things to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got so much more out of the show listening to your podcasts as I watch along. Rita, you can give me as much historical background as you want. I always want to know more about the backstory of the characters and what else was going on during the time period. My research skills are not much more than going to Wikipedia, so your effort is appreciated. Honestly, I'm not doing much more than that by myself, but okay. (laughs) I did watch this series all the way through a few months ago, but I'm watching it again and trying to pick up on more. Like, I totally missed the bird connections in the first episode. (laughs) I couldn't quite figure out why Franz is the main guy, since his father is still alive. Thanks for giving the backstory there. Um, Actually, the Emperor is... The for- well, like the former emperor is also still alive, so you've got the <laughs> former emperor. That's insane. Uh, the emperor's brother, and then they're like the emperor. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fucking. Crazy. It's insane. Some thoughts about characters in general in episode two. Elizabeth slash sissy. How do we get sissy from Elizabeth? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah, she gives me Jennifer Lawrence vibes. I keep thinking of Katniss. Hmm. It's the dark hair. Yeah. Um, Franz, I'm with Michelle. Lose the moustache. Yes. Much more handsome in person. <clears throat> he has great chemistry with just about everyone. Max, douchebag through and through. Mm-hmm. Little brother, I haven't seen a Disney movie lately, but is he the spinning image of some Disney character? <laughs> and I do mean the cartoon. He is freakishly cute. <laughs> he is. Uh, yeah. Franz's mum, Sophie. She has the best costumes and is killing it in her role. She is mesmerizing to watch. Elena, I think you need the wig talk music. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not bringing it back just for one wig. Um, I'm watching The Crown now too. Pardon, sorry. Uh, And no one can get a blonde wig with bangs to look right there either. (laughs) Nobody can do a bob. Um, the two dads. Elizabeth's dad seems to be a pretty smart guy, and Franz is pretty dumb. Both are kind of comic relief, and I'm here for it. Uh, favorite scene of episode two: the waltz. How do they do that without getting dizzy? Yeah. Second favorite scene: when Sophie's lover comes back. Sizzle, sizzle. <laughs> So is he Franz's dad? Mm. Uh, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, favorite costume: <laughs> anything Sophie wears. Least favourite scene, Max's party. Why did Elizabeth have to go to that? I guess she was pissed about how they treated her at the official night before the wedding party. Um, I'd be pissed too. She gets all gussied up, which takes hours. Mm -hmm. And just to be dismissed in less than five minutes because you are tired. I can feel her frustration. But Max is so creepy and she knows it mm-hmm. i did enjoy how the ladies in waiting were gushing over franz lists he was pretty hot mm-hmm. he was and yeah. like i was like why what's going on how does he have this charisma i'm very confused um one more question about episode one in the scene where Sophia, Sophie is watching the two people make out through the curtains, who were the two people? I guessed it was Franz and the Countess he was getting down with before, but why was Sophie spying and where were they that she could just put a curtain and see them? It wasn't Franz and the Countess. That would be really disgusting. She should yeah. not be watching her son have sex. Uh-uh. It was her lady-in-waiting and some dude. Ah. I she gives me bisexual vibes, mm-hmm. so that's why that was that. Yeah. Uh, lastly, 
every time I listen to your podcast, I seem to forget that you add a song at the end. And it's such a great surprise. You always make me <laughs> smile and I always listen all the way through. Thank you, ladies. Your devoted listener, Carol from Connecticut. Aww. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. This week's song is going to be a tune. And when I thought of it, I was like, please it, it's give me gonna an award. Be a tune? It's a tune. Okay. It's a good song. Uh, it's a song. Uh, Aren't the other aren't the other songs a tune? Like when you call something a banger, like yes, they're oh. all bangers, but you know, okay. some it's a banger, bang it's a bop, than... it's a tune. Yeah, okay, it's a tune with a capital right. T. It's all a right. tune. <laughs> I will be excited to hear it. Let's see. Uh, hi again, ladies. Weddings are stressful for everyone, and this family is not any different. And so it all goes a bit pear shaped. Big eye, blushy emoji. Uh. Obviously, poor Elizabeth must be shaped into the empress they want. Well, at least in a superficial way. Yeah. There are lots of rules. No first names. Only ladies of court are her friends. Her wardrobe is selected for her. Two hours of baths and donkey's milk. Again, with the wide eye blushing emoji. Um, and not walking on the grass. Can we talk about this donkey milk business? Is, is that a thing? She had a lot of weird body image issues, and she did a lot of bizarre things. What I don't understand is 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 two baths for two hours. Your skin is going to wrinkle. It's gonna look like a freaking white raisin. Maybe that's what the milk is for to stop the wrinkling. <gasps> <laughs> Maybe we're missing out on something. She looks well, really fantastic. To be fair, what do we apparently? Know? Donkey milk is rich in lactose and whey proteins, contributing to the intestinal absorption of calcium, you essential for to bone. Drink it, I know. You I know. It's not doing shit when it's touching your skin. That's there are like donkey milk miracle serums for face and body, and uh, yeah, but people will buy anything. Your skin is not yeah. a great place to absorb minerals. People, yeah. come on. Yes. If you, uh, if you want... Hippocrates, <laughs> Hippocrates reportedly used it as a treatment for arthritis, coughs, and wounds. He's putting donkey milk on his wounds. He's he, that's just so fucking stupid. <laughs> how many how many people do you think he gave sepsis to? <laughs> oh my god. Oh dear. Yeah. So. Boy. Don't try this at home, kids. No. Just, just don't. Mm -mm. No. Shower gel will do, do fine. <laughs> and how many donkeys would you have to milk in order to have enough bath milk for two two-hour baths? I mean, I assume that they're mixing it into the water. I, I don't think, like, the whole thing is donkey milk. Well, would I, would, <laughs> I would hope. Oh, my God. I would hope not. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh sweet lord. Oh, God. Okay. What's wrong with soap? <laughs> <laughs> back, to the, back to the email. Um, I must say I laughed out loud when Elizabeth walks on the grass to look at the bird and the ladies all freaked. That happened to me in Austria many years ago. I was quite pregnant and a bit emotional due to something else and desperately needing to sit down in a park whilst waiting for my husband. The only shade was under a tree, so I simply walked on the grass and plunked myself down. Some Austrian dude ran over to tell me that I couldn't sit on the grass. It wasn't allowed in Austria. I just burst out crying and he walked away. Slowly. Squinty eye laughing emoji. Anyway, I digress. Highlight, Maxi's Soiree, Debauchery Personified. Franz Liszt playing the piano looks like Fabio. Yes! <laughs> That's the vibe! Yes! Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the footmen look like they stepped out of the Moulin Rouge dressed as sexy sailors serving absinthe. Party on! Apparently absinthe makes your heart the heart grow fonder. As Elizabeth decides she loves Franz and rejects Max's advances again, and she apologizes to Helena. Yay, sisters will reunite, reunite eventually. Questions left after this episode. Franz's real daddy? Hmm? Hmm? I don't like that storyline. Me neither. Um, a little sister lost? 
Archduchess Sophia is distressed and cries for the daughter she has lost. What happened? Real soap opera stuff happening now. Strap yourself in. Clappy, clappy emojis. Um, P.S. I'm not mentioning the virginity test examination. I know it was done historically, but I can't cope. Yes. Ciao for now. Maria from Perth, Australia. Again. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Yeah, you keep on writing in, girl. I have real questions about whether the virginity test slash examination thing was real. It's not mentioned in anything that I was reading. And also, casual, uh, casually want to mention, she was 15. She was 15! Lovely as the patriarchy is, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Since, yeah. since, um, young, since young women were getting married, you know, that young, um, you know, we think back to Henry VIII's sixth wife, you know, Catherine Howard. How old was she when she married? Oh, she wasn't the sixth wife. Um, Catherine no, she's the fifth. She's the fifth yeah. wife. Yeah. Oh, I got the one that got painted as slutty teenager because she didn't want to have yeah. sex with the gross 50 year old that had, mm-hmm. a had a great big wound leg weeping kept, wound on his leg yeah, yeah apparently mm-hmm. it smelled really bad like oh, oh sure how, how dare she not be madly in love with him i know uh, i think she was about 16 17 i can't yeah. really remember yeah so but yeah it, it's one of those things that if it didn't actually happen it feels like it could have happened oh absolutely um so, absolutely yeah Ugh. There's actually like a very similar thing that happens in an episode of The Great, um, mm-hmm. and it's it. I couldn't help but compare the two scenes because The Great is really much more of a comedy, and they mm-hmm. played that moment as like the the guy who does it to her definitely doesn't want to test her, <laughs> and she doesn't want him to do it. So it's played more of like a comedy, but then she does get really angry and is like constantly brings it up that he did that mm-hmm. to her. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't help but compare those two situations where like in the great, they will treat somebody's huge trauma as like a joke. And honestly, a lot of people get killed and it's like quite funny. Um, mm-hmm. but, and in this version, it's like, serious trauma that's gonna yeah. like damage her and she's gonna like always remember like that was her introduction mm-hmm. to court yeah all right then so what is our episode three description our our tiny itty bitty description thank you netflix prepare for two sentences um, <laughs> so the title of the episode is called the wedding as we have mentioned a million times in excitement and it reads as follows Elizabeth marries Franz, and the royal family gets a taste for her rising popularity. Sophie's former lover attends the wedding and discovers a secret. Okay. Mm, that Franz is his son. I fucking hate the storyline. I know. <laughs> How many, any figures in history, the son of who they're supposed to be? Because, like, <laughs> literally, every royal figure is like, oh, you know, that's not, he's not really his son. <laughs> It was... Oh God! Well, you know, if if he wasn't uh, his real son, then you know it's a it's an infusion of some fresh genes into that <laughs> Thank God. jacked up uh, <laughs> gene pool. Unfortunately, they would still be first cousins because that's Defo, his mom, and <laughs> the maternal line is a uh, problem. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Blech. Max is the one that they. Th- thought wouldn't was actually the son of napoleon the second mm-hmm. none of these rumors make any sense to me mm-hmm. right if your entire purpose in life which was sophie's was to make sure that you had the next emperor as your child why the hell would you give birth to an illegitimate son why would yeah. you <laughs> this doesn't make any sense it doesn't it doesn't fit her character at all whatever i guess the fox or <laughs> hanging on his neck was just too enchanting for her. She was mm-hmm. like, ooh, get me a piece of that road to kill. <laughs> uh, that's all from us this time. Uh, we will be back next week to discuss episode three of The Empress. If you have any opinions and would like to have them read out in our inbox section, please email us at inthebooksnetwork at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at inthebooks. 
And please remember to rate and review and share the podcast with your friends. Thanks again so much for listening. Bye. Bye.